The 805 Focus is brought to you in part by Nonprofit Connect. Nonprofit Connect provides superior leadership tools and resources so nonprofit leaders and board members can make valuable decisions to move their organization forward to a sustainable and vibrant future. More information on services online at nonprofitconnect.org. Welcome everyone to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Jeff Green, and Jeff is CEO of Santa Barbara City College. Welcome, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Yeah, thanks so much for being Just with us. Just to be clear, I, I run the foundation, not the college. Uh, Dr. Goswami. Did I say be, college? That's all right. Oh, that's golly. Right. <laughs> Sorry. Santa Barbara City College <coughs> Foundation. That's right. Of course, you could do it all because you are you uh, are quite the that. talented guy. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> so, Jeff, I mm -hmm. know a lot of things have been happening at City College, a lot of exciting things. Um, maybe you'd like to highlight a few of those? Sure, sure. Uh, you know, the college is, is 110 years old. So Santa Barbara City College is actually one of the oldest community colleges in the nation. So we have a, a real deep history here in the community. Uh, and, you know, over that time, it grew from, it really grew out of the K-12 district. So it was really an extension of our, of our elementary and high school districts, ultimately um, turning into the modern community college in the, in the middle of the last century. So God. there's a lot a lot that's developed there over the years. You know, we have, of course, a world-class adult education program that's now been reorganized into School of Extended Learning, mm -hmm. and that's uh, something the community has always loved and appreciated. Mm -hmm. um, the foundation uh, led the creation of the SBCC Promise uh, yes. three and a half years ago now. So we have that, oh which is you know, support for all of our local students. Uh, and then there's some really innovative partnerships that are constantly um, being, you know, kind of created and and uh, tweaked and made better and and reinvented. So there's a lot. Kai, and you were really right at the at the beginning of that promise program. Yeah, that You've been was shepherding that. That was something that we created uh, right shortly after I got there. That it was sort of part of the movement. Um, so that was happening nationally, and we we stepped into it right in the sort of the second wave that started yeah. in 2015. So we now, I, you know, I think it's fair to say that the SBCC Promise is one of the nation's leaders, uh, especially in the privately funded space. So it's, it's fully funded by philanthropy. So the, the entirety of the budget, which is about $2.5 million a year, is uh -huh. raised every year from our community. Yes. Um, really in support of our local students. So maybe you take just a minute and tell us about the Promise for those people that are watching and don't know what the Certainly. Promise program is. Certainly. So the, the Promise is part of that. Like I said, there's a, there's a national movement of mm -hmm. sorts. Um, it was something that was invented really in 2005 in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Um, and the idea was simply to, to create these place-based scholarships so that the entirety of a community had access to whatever educational mm -hmm. resources were there. Uh, and that doesn't replace uh, or come anywhere near replacing public investment, uh, mm -hmm. but it's sort of a way to make sure the door is wide open for everyone. So it's in many ways an access program. Uh, the second piece of it is really uh, about trying to figure out how do students persist, you know, what has changed in a student's life in 2020 mm -hmm. versus, you know, 2000, 1980, 1960. I mean, things have changed for what a, what a traditional college student looks like and is. Yeah. Uh, and so we, we look a lot at um, what are the barriers to access? What are the barriers to persistence or staying in school? So mm -hmm. that we have a lot of students that will come for a short time. It, uh, life happens and they have to move on. So mm -hmm. the promise is also not only about opening the door at the front end, but pe keeping students engaged, um, keeping students in school. And ultimately, it's about completion. So what do they want out of this, this opportunity? And it may be transfer to a four-year institution. It, it may be a professional certificate. Uh, it may be some other other version of, of education that works for them. But overall, what we're trying to do is model the, the most open access version, the most mm -hmm. comprehensive version, and a privately funded version at that. So what we've got now is 1,700 local students at any given time are being fully supported through two years of Santa Barbara City College. They get all of their tuition, all of their books, oh, and all their supplies paid for. Anything required for their coursework uh, is covered by the generosity of our, our community's donors. Wow. And all that mm -hmm. from, really, the philanthropy from this community. That Absolutely. Is just, Absolutely. That's impressive. It is. It is. It's one of the things we love about this region. So, so now, okay, so go back to what you were talking about, if you mm -hmm. would, about adult ed. I have a question. Yeah. Do most community colleges or city colleges have such a robust uh, adult ed 
program or extended School learning? of Extended Learning. Yeah, they, they're, the answer is most have something, but very few have as broad an offering as, as we have at Santa Barbara City College. Um, and you may remember that uh, you know over the last decade, there's been a lot of changes yep. in that structure. Um, and what has been brought back uh, during Dr. Beebe's time as superintendent president uh, was what we now call the School of Extended mm -hmm. Learning. Uh, Dr. Melissa Moreno is the vice president mm -hmm. that oversees that. And it's really uh, an innovative space. It's, it's, where, it's one of the ways that our community can take advantage of the, the wealth of talent that we have. Uh, you know, Santa Barbara is unusual in that it draws for people from all over the world, often at the top of their respective careers. They may choose to visit here, retire mm -hmm. here. They may be connected to the other higher ed institutions like UC Santa Barbara. Um, there, there's a lot of ways that people connect. And so we have artists and artisans and craftspeople and educators uh, and, and engineers and technical specialists of all kinds uh, who are willing and able to teach in our adult ed program. So there's both a four, four fee version and then a free version. Okay. Um, and it really is, is probably one of the most creative and innovative parts of, of our educational system. Yeah. <clears throat> so that... Uh, so the short answer know. is no, not everybody has that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that's so, a testament to the leadership and all the faculty that have come and made it what it is yeah. over the years. And the nature of yeah. Santa Barbara itself. Yeah, absolutely. But we can all be proud of that piece of yeah. City College as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the beauty of the college, I think community colleges in general, and I, and I have to be honest, I was a product of the University of California. Mm -hmm. um, that's what brought me to the community, and I, and I loved it, and I, I had a tremendous experience there, but I didn't really have that much familiarity with community college until mm -hmm. I began this work five years oh. ago. Uh, and what I've realized is that the community colleges are truly the, if you can think of one institutional resource that we have mm -hmm. to solve virtually any problem in our society, in our communities, in our politics, in our government, in our economies, mm -hmm. um, it, it's really the community college because it's not only serves students that are coming right out of high school um, and get them prepared for whatever their next step is, mm -hmm. um, it's technical and trade education, so there's really close partnerships with our, our uh, business and industry world. Um, it's the lifelong learning that happens at the School of Extended Learning, so there's really a, a lot there, and I think most people touch one or maybe two mm -hmm. pieces of that, and they don't necessarily realize that it does does all of that. You know, mm -hmm. I have read many times mm -hmm. about people, families, students, mm -hmm. who think, oh, uh, my, my child is done with high school now, we gotta send him to a four-year school. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's okay for some people, but yeah. to think that that's the best answer for everyone is not a good idea, it yeah. seems. It, yeah. I, what I've read is that a community college really sort of prepares the student to be ready to go to that four-year school. Absolutely. Well, there's a, there's a lot of evidence that, I mean, we've spent a lot of time in, the, in this country and over the last several decades trying to open doors to college and higher ed. Um, mm -hmm. In many ways, I think it does mirror what we saw in, in this country a hundred years ago. You had this, this open debate about, does everyone need mandatory four-year free high school? Um, that was a oh. radical notion at the turn of the Prior, yeah. two prior centuries ago. Yeah. Um, you know, that was a, a farming economy coming in into an industrial age. Mm -hmm. And I would argue that what we're going through now and have been going through is really this sort of industrial economy transitioning into a service and learning economy. And, and what does that mean for our schooling? And, and it seems clear that everybody, not everybody, vast majority of people need something beyond high school. Um, but a four-year liberal arts program is, mm -hmm. not, is not a one-size-fits-all solution. So it's, it's wonderful for many students. Uh, but there's probably many more where something beyond high school, a place for them to figure out what their talents mm -hmm. are. Um, and for those that are high performing, I mean, this is the beauty of it. We also get the valedictorians. We get the folks that were the straight A students in high school and maybe they want to stay closer to home. They have family obligations. Uh, they want to save money. There's a lot of good reasons. I, I will say that one of the things I discovered early on is that the, the students that are prepared through two years of community college mm -hmm. um, are often better prepared than if they went yep. straight into their first two years yep. at a larger uh, research institution. Yep. Um, I have just read because that. it's a, a pure teaching environment. So, yeah. I mean, to, to move on to the next level, there's, those resources are outstanding. But if you really mm -hmm. want to prepare students mm -hmm. um, in a broad way, community colleges are a wonderful tool. And isn't there a <clears> new <throat> sort of. Um, I don't know if it's a new program or what, mm -hmm. where, where um, students that are, I don't know if it's juniors or seniors in high school, mm -hmm. can also go to City College yes. at the same time. Yes. And so that when they actually graduate from high school, they're actually graduating with their AA degree too. Is there that true? Are, absolutely. In fact, there's these stories of, of students who actually graduate high schools simultaneous with, a, with achieving one or more associate's degrees. Um, no, that's, that's fairly unusual, but yeah. Yeah, it's called dual enrollment. Oh. Uh, and it's actually not that new. It's a program that we've mastered well in the Santa Barbara region 
um, fairly early, but that a lot of schools do have now. Uh, and, and at any given point, there are thousands of local students in our high schools that are also enrolled in college courses. Uh, and some of those are on their college, on, on our campus at Santa mm -hmm. Barbara City College, and some of those are at their high school campuses. So there's a, a group of faculty that do both both places. And it's, it's really an, a remarkable program. And it's a great way to yeah. get ahead and get prepared, especially for high performing you know, students mm -hmm. that are already sure. doing really well in high school and are looking for something more. It's a great opportunity. Um, but frankly, also for those who may be first generation students and not have a familiarity with what mm -hmm. college is or looks like mm -hmm. or feels like to be part of, and, and it's a great doorway that way too. Wow. <clears throat> so. that, yeah. It sounds like there's a place for everybody. There is. I mean, it's really the, it's a great equalizer. It, I mm -hmm. mean, the, and that's the, one of the differences of community college, uh, well, students this, these days, is that it doesn't look like what the typical college student looked mm -hmm. like a generation or two ago. Um, so it's not someone graduating, going off, you know, away from their family, four years, residential campus. Yeah, yeah. Um, in many cases, it's someone who skipped, you know, didn't complete school um, mm -hmm. or just barely completed high school, uh -huh. coming back later in life, may have a family, may work one or more jobs. Uh, and in many cases are the first in their families to attend college. And so, and so, of course, that means something for how we do our work, and yeah. both the foundation and the college have to then rethink and restructure about what they offer because that's a different um, pr proposition than sort of a, a traditional student yeah. might have been 40 years ago. Golly. Yeah. So now you, you talked to, or you alluded to um, special partnerships that you have mm -hmm. Why don't you tell I us about that? I did allude to that. <laughs> so I, I think one of the, the real beauties of community college is that they are naturally good partners. Um, they're sort of set up to partner with community organizations. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean we all do it particularly. I mean, we, we have to learn it like everybody. <laughs> um, but, but if you think about what we offer, on one hand, we have to partner with our K-12 districts because we're okay, taking sure. students out of their 12th grade year on to higher ed. Um, but we also have to partner with business and industry. So we... We offer all kinds of different certificates and technical training program. You know, what, what was a, an apprenticeship might have done for you in an in a earlier time. And we actually have that as part of our programs in certain fields as well. So we work well with, um, and there's probably one example I tend to always bring up, which is Cottage Health. So ah. they many years ago realized that for them, having locally trained nurses uh, was a much better choice, both because they've already settled in the community, they've, they've got a home, they made connections. You know, Santa Barbara is a hard place to find a home, especially mm -hmm. if you're a young person or a student mm -hmm. struggling to make ends meet. Um, and they found that, that people that had already were part of the community and then went through the nursing program uh, had a much longer lo longevity on mm -hmm. staff at Cottage Health. Um, and then that grew into a whole range of things. I, I think we're at about 15 years now for this partnership. So, you know, part of our objective Gosh. is to train students who can then be be uh, nurses with our you know, professionals yeah. within our, our health system. Um, Such and a practical approach. Absolutely, absolutely. And there's lots of opportunities like that. That's just one of the larger ones. And each college has its own specialty. So Santa Barbara City College is known for its nursing program, also known for our marine diving program because that's a, a, a unique program in the country. So marine diving tech yeah. is, a, is a major. It's an it's a educational program here that you won't find any at any other college. And of course, with the, uh -huh. the maritime history of our community, there's a lot of resources to, to do. That's that saying right. a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's, there's, there's a lot of those. Our auto tech program's another one. Our cosmetology school, that's another partnership between the foundation yeah. and, and the college. Gosh. So, yeah. So practical. <clears throat> well, and yeah. really, I bet a lot of people don't know about many mm -hmm. of these aspects. Yeah. I think that's true. I mean, I, I've often said that with a, with a possible exception, just to bring them up again, um, and you're welcome, Ron, Worf, uh, <laughs> to, uh, Co Cottage Health, it, it probably has the, the greatest number of personal connections with our community, with the individuals in our community. But maybe maybe second only to Cottage Health, I would argue Santa Barbara City College does. Gosh. Because if you think of the generations of oh, yeah. people that have either gone to school there, worked there as faculty, as staff, um, been part of a program, School of Extended Learning, uh, you know, there's really no one in town that doesn't, isn't yeah. at least touched by it, maybe one degree of separation. So there's a lot there. And you get to invite donors to be a part of that. I do, I do. And I, I think we're in a moment where that, there's a renaissance of sorts in philanthropy for community yeah. colleges. Oh yeah, I can it's, feel that. It's newer for us. If you, if you look at the, the, uh, the private schools, they, they figured this out over a century ago. Mm -hmm. um, you know, public four-year higher ed figured this out. It really took off in the 80s yeah. and, and 90s. And, and I often joke it feels like we figured it out last Tuesday. I mean, it's, a, <laughs> it's a newer thing, but, but I think once people understand what it, what it can do for the community yeah. and what it offers, and sometimes it's very personal what it offers mm -hmm. to them, 
Um, but people are very generous, and there, there are a lot of resources out there that can yeah. be brought to bear, and the dollars go farther. I mean, that's just the truth of it. Yeah. It's a, it's a lean, mean, educating machine, and that's, yeah. that's what community college is. Doing. Well, thank you so much for being with us. Thank Absolutely. you for your leadership. Thank you for all the important work you do in our community. Thank you, Sandra. I really appreciate the invitation. And thank you for being with us on 805 Focus, and we'll see you next time.